So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast Under the Stairs. This is our Silent Night in Pieces series, where we take beloved classic 2012 remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, the movie Silent Night, and we break up into five-minute reviewable segments. I am joined by podcasters from around the globe as we review those five minutes. We go deep into those five minutes and then I release them out of order so there is no chronological order to the releasing of these episodes so this might be the first one you listen to might be the last one or one in the middle on this episode we are covering minutes 40 through 45 joining me on the show is one phenomenal badass lady do not mess with her or she will break you (laughs) she will snap you in half she will use you to pick her teeth and then she will put you in the bin it is of course the phenomenal Lacey Lou. I don't know why I made you so aggressive, but I kind of like the setup. Um, yeah, I think you just like describe Dan's fantasy. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. I guess I, 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 I now I think I haven't had like good self ambitious goals of being somebody's like human toothpick, like. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I need to dream bigger, Duncan. <laughs> I do. I do get worried if someone in an, like an interview with her like that. Where do you see yourself in five years' time, human toothpick? <laughs> right. <laughs> really? <laughs> you, you go with that answer. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> uh, now we got to put that in a horror movie too. Human toothpick has to happen. <laughs> I, I yep. get a feeling that it could be in our Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Like Freddy right. picks his teeth with someone, and it's just horrible because he's 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 just had a whole mess of tuna, and that person's like, no, that's that's the scene. Why did he have to eat tuna? I have like because he wanted his teeth picked with a human. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, if we start picking it, listen, we start pulling at that thread here. My Nightmare on Elm Street remake falls apart very quickly. So let's not do that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> narratively it, all, it is all based on that scene so we we destroy that scene it's not happening um blumhouse you listen to me we're coming for you uh i don't know why that's that's a call back to an episode you may have not even heard yet um right. you you landed uh a segment which is just mere mere seconds from Pissed, a, a woman in a chipper Pissed. <laughs> I, I literally messaged in the chat. Yep. <laughs> like I was like, oh, some good shit might be coming up on my 40 through 45 because my first one fucking sucked. <laughs> and so I was like, there's a lot going on here. And for as long as it took her to go out that fucking window in the previous five minutes, 
She should have been into my segment. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't really commit to getting out a window like someone that's about to be killed by a killer Santa. She's kind, of, she's kind of very kind of trepidatious as she carefully positions herself to make sure that she can get just the right fall out of that window. I, I'm with you on this one. I think she should have died earlier. Um, let's let you. <laughs> this is just. It's a lot of McDowell talking again, which makes me happy, but it's also a, a, a lot of nonsense. Uh, this is minutes 40 through 45. This is like right after the massacre at Crazy Benny's Motel, which is what it's called and what everyone refers to in this movie. Um, and we start off with Giles. Uh, he's on his knees and um, the deputy just seconds before has found a bloody footprint. And Giles is like, looks like, it looks like it's the same perp. And the deputy's like, the woman, Goldie Willis, was the first one to die. There's no sign of fourth century. Whoever did this, she, she must have known him. I mean, she opened the door. The last call that Frank made was to a Mr. Snow, right? <laughs> Which, I mean, we're on a, we're on a porn set here, right? And the the, the, the guy who, the, the guy, the sleazeball that has filmed all this has a, a contact called Mr. Snow and no one, no one in the police department puts this together straight away is fucking worrying, right? This is why this killer gets away for as long as he does. Because no one's doing their job here. Like, they're all like, oh, I don't think I know a Mr. Snow. And I'm like, what? I'm like, clearly drugs. Yeah. Um, Dr. McDowell says it with, like, such girth, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Doesn't ring a bell. I don't know him. <laughs> I've never heard of him. <laughs> yeah. He's like... <laughs> here's a call back to our other recording uh, Giles says I know a Mr Cloud but he's an Indian I mean Native American I think this was a guy that was closing out that parade you were at that was his uh, name. it could have been Mr. he was Cloud. banging some drums for sure <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> Mandel says alright son listen I want you to lock up the crime scene oh and check out that rat infested motel someone may have heard or seen something and of course the deputy's like, sir, there's a video camera. I mean, like, case closed. Book him, Dano. McDowell's like, well, bring the damn thing in then. Maybe we'll get lucky. And um, we then cut to Cal Cal Christmas, I can't say that. Christmas carolers. That's what I wanted to say. Um, who are not wearing a lot of material. And uh, <clears throat> Rev Perv, as I've called him, because he's Reverend Pervert. Um, is, <laughs> is out handing things to onlookers and thanking them and they are all singing in, in perfect harmony um, counter, counterpoint melodies that works and then he finish and the reverend comes up and says girls I'd like to thank you for bringing some true Christmas cheer to town and he's ogling them something rotten um, and then he gets his camera out and he's like oh if I could just uh, get one shot for the parish newsletter and do you know where, do you know he doesn't take a photo of their faces, Lacey? Do you know what he takes a photo of? Boobs! Boobs. He, and he takes more than one shot of the boobs. He takes several shots and then he's like, oh, you what? can do better than that. One more shot for luck. And he's like, that's right, spread some joy over the world. And I'm like, you I, are a dirty, dirty I, I like boy. That it's, I like that it's showing the pictures that he's taken. <laughs> They're all bloody. They're just like blurry as fuck. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're literally they're literally how an old guy would take a photo on his phone. Right. Where his camera is all bloody. It's like one of them's half got a thumb over it. Um, you know, the worst pose ever. But the best part is you can hear Killer Santa. Yeah. In heat, like yes. just heavy breathing as he's taking these blurry photos. Oh, he's loving it. <laughs> He's like he 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 is he is a, a killer cuck. <laughs> like he's he's getting he's he's getting off in a van watching a reverend take smutty photos of some teenagers. It's like take another Carolyn. <laughs> like take another photo. Uh, Carolyn, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And spread some Christmas cheer. Um, oh, um, so <laughs> so he says thank you to them, and then uh, Tiffany from earlier on in our segment, which may have not played yet or may have, I don't know. Um, she turns around to her boyfriend, Dennis. Dennis is the one that they do the crazy kind of recreation in this movie from the original film of the kid going to visit his granddad, except in this one, 
the kid is actually a teenager and the granddad speaks like Pennywise. <laughs> like, Beware of the <laughs> sewers, Billy Boy. <laughs> like, yeah, what was that? <laughs> like, I have no what idea. Was... He's like, doesn't even look old. This is a regular guy that they've just sprayed his hair silver. <laughs> You're old now. <laughs> You're an old man. Let's just draw something. I think I mentioned on one of the other recordings. It looks like it looks like a stunt double for one of the characters in the further and insidious <laughs> like pantomime makeup and like silver spray. He's here, like you're now a ghost. Um, it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, but anyway, she's she's there. She's like, "Hi, Dennis," and they go off together. Santa watches them go away. And then we go back to the station, and now we're going to watch an old man plug a camcorder into a TV, which apparently is really difficult. <laughs> oh, Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. It's like, shouldn't we call in some help? And McDill's like, it's Christmas Eve. And assuming they could get here and give a damn, it'll be midnight before anyone shows up. No, we're just going to have to take this maniac down ourselves. And that's where our training kicks in. And I'm like, he is, like, getting a chubby for this? Like, he's, like, he, he's all in. He's a crazy Malcolm McDill. Um, and the video starts playing. And we get our our girl up on the bed doing her thing. And McDill's like, who is that? And the deputy's like, maybe we should fast forward it. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. And then Tiffany's in the shot as well. <laughs> he's like, ha, ha, who, who, what, where, huh? <laughs> She's like, maybe we should fast forward it. And he's like, she's like, fast forward. He's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just making a mental note to call the mayor. And she's like, about the killings. And he's like, no, about his daughter. You know, just don't want to scare people unnecessarily. I don't know why my voice went part Yorkshire there at the end, but it did. Um, kind of almost pilot. Uh, and the deputy says, but he's going to find it sooner or later. I mean, people are going to talk. And then my. <laughs> <laughs> such a dick he's like he'll find out when I find the killer never present your superiors a problem always present the solution <laughs> like, like imagine like this is like I don't know how many scenes were ahead or before of him basically like <laughs> later the deputy said now you put hummus on the burger deputy you put hummus on the burger <laughs> <laughs> There's avocado on my burger. Like just like literally just talking about burgers and the toppings you're not supposed to put on them. Um <laughs> He's like, right, here you go. And then we see a Santa killer do a jump scare and of course the women scream. And McDill doesn't because he's too hardcore. Uh but he does get a fright when they scream. He's like, God, you scare me to death. And then <laughs> The deputy phones, it's a terrible McDowell, I apologise. Uh, she phones Giles and she said, Giles is like, I'm on my way in, clearly, as he stands doing fuck all in this movie. Um, yeah, a waste of space, Giles. Uh, the deputy says, listen, we've got a lead on our Santa from the motel. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, he's, he's, wearing a, he's wearing a Santa suit and a mask. And Giles is looking up over all these people like wearing Santa outfits. And he's like, well, that narrows it down, man. This town square is like Santa Central, which is what we would call our remake of this movie. Me and you, Lacey, would call it Santa Central. Santa Central? Yeah, uh, it'd be set in South Central. Just <laughs> like added flair. You know, like, like they've got gangs over there called the Reds. The Reds would be dressed in Santa outfits. I'm practically writing this movie while we're sitting here. That's how you make that movie. Yeah, I think we gotta have um, we gotta set some floats um on fire. <laughs> we set our floats on fire. We like the the, yeah. the holes in that are actually holes. Come on, what <laughs> we do, what we doing here, people? We're making fucking money. Like I'm just printing money right now. I'm printing money for Hollywood right now. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, <laughs> bring it back in a little bit. Um. She says, listen, this this one's big, all right? Size 13 boots, over six foot. Anyone matching that description, you bring them in immediately. And Giles is like, that's cute, Aubrey. I'm going to need some help. And then we cut to the church. And as if this reverend wasn't a pervert, right? Enough, having taken photos of all these kids. <laughs> he's, he's, he's walking up with the collection bowl, which I don't know when people put this money in this collection bowl because we're about to see the bit that people would have put money into it and there's no one there, right? But anyway... 
He's, he's walking up, he takes some money at the collection bowl and puts it in his pockets. What a prick. I hate this guy. <laughs> like $30. Yeah. <laughs> he is, oh, come to daddy. Um, I mean, come to Reverend, because daddy's a different character in this. Uh, he puts it <laughs> <he's> in his <laughs> pocket. Uh, and he walks in and instantly becomes a, a stand up comedian. He's like, oh, a little crowd in here tonight, huh? Um, and it's just a wee <laughs> old woman. Old. It's just one wee old woman sitting there. Um, and then Santa comes and he's like, ah, there might be some room at the front. And the Santa killer walks up the aisle, just as he's saying, I prepared a sermon. Uh, just a few words, really. And then you missed out on the great sermon. And the, like, stabby, 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 stabby. I missed out on the great everything, Duncan. Like, no, this is, this is how bullshit my scenes were. All right, so I, I missed the bitch in the wood chipper, right? <laughs> However... They find the video yeah. to where things were happening prior. Yeah, as a reminder right? for you. <laughs> you could have had as this. As a scene. reminder. But I, so I'm like, oh, well, maybe they'll recap part of it. No. And I'll get a kill in my... No, that doesn't even happen. I get boobs you... that aren't blurry. <laughs> and then I just get the stupid Santa mask there at, like for a brief pop-up. That's what... That is the type of fuckery... <laughs> I get for suggesting you to watch Holiday in Handcuffs. <laughs> Listen, my interest is peaked. My interest <laughs> is peaked because there was instant, like, uh, there was well, no one voted for it. But there was also, like, no. <laughs> like instant kind of, <laughs> this made the list? I was like, yes, because Lacey took part and suggested something. Did you suggest something, <laughs> unnamed user who's going to complain about this? No. So sit down and shut the fuck up then. Hey, Melissa Joan Hart is legit a psycho. I watch it every Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to say I will add it into my rotation. I will at some point, just because you you've got you've got my. I, I want to see psycho Melissa Joan Hart. I mean, I think that's fair. I want to see my Sabrina I mean, go wild. She takes fucking Mario Lopez hostage. Like, <laughs> come on, who doesn't want to see Sabrina kidnap AC Slater? Like, come on, like I mean, it's, that's. I Comedy gold right there. Yeah, I, I would cast them in our Santa Central movie as well. And they will be on the float and they will burn. <laughs> it's always fire for you. It's always fire for you. <laughs> I don't know why. I've Lacey Lou, secret arsonist. Uh, <laughs> I have set a blanket on fire accidentally once. <laughs> Wasn't too happy about it. I really liked that blanket. Was it watching Jaws too, by any chance? No. Um, no, I think I was um, drunk doing a commentary on uh, Full House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, you never want to set something on fire whilst doing a commentary because part of the commentary oh just <laughs> part of the commentary just <laughs> just just you screaming fire, fire. <laughs> My leg just started burning, and all of a sudden, there's this big hole in this blanket. I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, I do. I feel for. I do feel for you. I do feel like you were shortchanged here. I feel the listeners are slightly shortchanged as well because nothing happens in this fucking scene. <laughs> hey, at least they now know. I almost set myself on fire, yep. and. I got a Native American banging on a drum at a parade. You did, and we also now know that Dan's secret fetish is a human toothpick. <laughs> a human toothpick, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually think we learned a lot. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> uh, you're a busy person, Lacey. You do podcasts and stuff and are just generally awesome. So where can people check out your stuff? Um, the Cut to the Chase feed. Uh, wherever podcasts are found, um, you can um, hear Skip to the Loo, The Summer Party Massacre, uh, which we'll be doing our Christmas show here very soon. We will be debating, which might seem like an easy debate, but you never know. Um, we will be debating the Black Christmas films. Ooh. Um, and then our feature presentation, which you actually covered on Cut to the Chase a couple years ago, our feature presentation will be P2. Ah, I really liked that movie as well. Really? Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, like yeah, I we got that, the. Was that the first time I'd seen it as well? I think. Was it? I think it was. I don't think I'd seen it before that. Have you seen it since? Uh, no, <laughs> but I did really enjoy it. I actually completely forgot about it until you <laughs> mentioned it there. And then I was like, "That oh, I really enjoyed that movie. That was the one in the the parking lot, wasn't it?" Yes. 
Yeah, yes, you better watch it this year. <laughs> fucking great movie, great movie. So yeah, I will watch that on my run up to Christmas. Which is me, Mario Lopez, who I've kidnapped, and Melissa Joan Hart, if she allows <laughs> me to kidnap him. <laughs> Just, you the, gotta watch it. The, the old burnt blind. There's like a whole ice skating. Thing. There's a whole ice skating scene that's supposed to be her, and it's clearly not. It's amazing as well. <laughs> 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 oh man uh, I'm so disappointed it did not get chosen well listen I'll tell you what is definitely chosen is the next one of these NPCs series which we will be recording in late January which is ages away which means it's practically here um, when we're doing Maniac Cop will you be back for that Lacey? oh you know it hopefully I get some more action in this next one yeah, and not just a reenactment on a videotape that isn't actually a fucking reenactment yeah I, I'm hoping that you actually get stuff that isn't just scenes of like Robert Zadar looking at his fucking like sitting in the shadows kind of looking at his nightstick <laughs> it'll be a first time watch for me too so. you've never seen Maniac Cop I've never seen Maniac Cop. Oh, you're going to have a fucking ball. You have Bruce Campbell. You have Tom motherfucking Atkins in that movie. Great. Well, you are going to get my authentic reaction then. Yes, I am looking forward to that. Ladies and gents, every single day this month, between the 1st and the 24th, we are dropping an episode for you, which means there is definitely an episode coming tomorrow. So until then, I will speak to you next time.